Hello everyone, today I want to talk about DNA, your epigenetics and how to change your future, your past and your presence by understanding how DNA works. Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the most often confused and misrepresented part of science which is DNA, the fabric of DNA, the fabric of your karma, that spinning double helix binding nuclei that is passed on by your parents and their ancestors and their ancestors and their ancestors and before that lizards, dinosaurs, single cell organisms and even before that the earth itself, the proteins, the amino acids and the universal structures that bring us into being. So I'm really excited and I'm going to begin as always with a quote on this subject and that quote is, all living things need their instruction manual and that is all they need carried in one very small suitcase. Larison Cadmore. So DNA is a theory that was proven in the 1960s and for a long time scientists have been looking for the building blocks, the instructions. For thousands of years we've been looking at living things and wondering how do they know? How do they know how to grow? How do they know when, how does a woman know when to give birth? How does a um, individual know to grow fingernails? How does a person know at what length their eyelashes to stop growing? And we kept looking for the instruction manuals and in one of the biggest scientific breakthroughs of all time was in 1960 when using some building blocks and using some modeling kit, uh, two scientists were able to show that the double helix RNA DNA pattern that is found in our in our cells is the instruction manual that those cells use to create the building blocks. And what was even more amazing is that they theorized that the DNA in a single microscopic cell had all the information needed to build a human. And not only did it have all the information to build a human, it had all the information necessary for that entire human's life. So when we talk about things like the collective unconscious or the universal intelligence that surround us and people go, oh yeah, that, that sounds crazy. Well, I can tell you, trying to tell someone 150 years ago that in a small cell was the entire fabric of human existence, they would tell you that that was just as crazy. So it's important that as we look at scientific breakthroughs and we have a knowing and a knowledge that we start to really not dismiss concepts like universal intelligence and, and, and that knowing that we have. And that knowing comes right through the DNA. And where does that DNA come from? It comes from the universe. It doesn't come from religion. It doesn't come from scientists. Scientists claim it, but they just found it. I love science. However, we, a cult of science is beginning in our culture where if it's scientific, then it must be true. Science simply acknowledges and observes things. It doesn't really give big answers, and it's not designed to. And when people keep asking scientists what the meaning of life is and if they think there's God, it's kind of like asking the guy at the um, McDonald's counter uh, whether you should um, invest, what stocks you should invest in. That's not what he does. But if you ask him, he might tell you, you know, you should invest in Goldman Sachs, he might tell you that. And, and sometimes they will, it doesn't mean you should take that information. So, as I said, in the 1960s, huge breakthrough, you know, that, that, that was just a really remarkable event for mankind to know that, that, that nature holds within it all this information. And you look, at, like, you look at me right now and you think, well, there's a lot of data in me. There's probably hundreds of trillions of terabytes of information to make me up. So how does nature get into a single microscopic cell when it's to download all my information would probably take hundreds of supercomputers? Well, we didn't, we don't know, we didn't know. And then the 1990s, led by a global push, um, led by um, Bill Clinton in particular, this was a big push by him, we mapped the human genome. So rather than just knowing how DNA worked, we wanted to map it. And this was considered the biggest scientific breakthrough of all time, at the time. And why? Because we thought that when we mapped the genome, I read all the sequences of DNA, we would know everything about humanity, we'd be able to fix every disease, we'd be able to, because we had the data, we knew what created cancer, it was this gene. And if it was this gene, all we have to do is mess around with this gene and we'd fix it. Thank the universe that it's a little bit more complex than that. We thought we had it, we didn't. What we learned is we know nothing, because immediately we found by mapping the genome, all those things we thought we could do with that information wasn't true. We couldn't solve cancer, we couldn't fix AIDS, we couldn't improve people's lives and, li and um, life expectation. All we did was we got more data. But we learned something very, very interesting. That is the field of epigenetics, which is 
in that genome, what turns on those genes? Because one of the interesting findings we had was that those genes in our genome were responsible for everything. So, so, so many men carried the gene for prostate cancer, but those men didn't get prostate cancer. So what turned a gene that could create prostate ca cancer on or off? And the field of epigenetics was created. And this is where things get really cool, because epigenetics is nature and nurture. You can turn genes on and turn genes off by your behaviours, your thoughts, your environment, the food you eat, the people you interact with. It is amazing. The fact we don't talk about this in school and tell kids that when they eat certain things, they can turn on certain genes is remarkable. So we're starting to understand how genes work. So how can you control genes and how can you be in charge of your destiny through using the understanding of genetics? Well, the first way is to understand your environment. You'll hear me say quite often, you are your environment. I mean that on many, many levels. We exist through this porthole, our two eyes, but ultimately we're a reflection and manifestation of the duality around us. There could be no earth without a perceiver or a, um, a conscious observer of earth. So we're all interdependent, you know. There could be no moonlight on the ocean if there wasn't the moon, and there could be no moon without the moonlight. They exist together. So from an environment perspective, and is, it's really key that you understand how important environment is and this is best illustrated by two twins who were both doctors who became epigenetics uh, majors in Harvard and these were two twins who went on to perform a very very simple study where one of them was to spend an entire year working on his fitness keeping within routine and eating healthy now as everyone knows identical twins are generally 99% uh, identical at a genetic level and his brother decided to travel through South America, drink heaps of beer, party, have a great time, eat junk food, and really not look after himself or put himself first. So after this year where one brother got to really you know, enjoy himself and one brother applied himself, they came back and they did a genetic test, which most observers thought, well, it won't change, you're 99% identical. When they did the genetic genome test and matched the twins' um, genes again, they were only 94% identical. So what had happened was the time spent in different environments had changed their epigenetics, the way the genes manifest themselves, to a point where they were now more different genetically than they were a year before that. So your environment and the things you surround yourself with will turn off and on the genes that will serve you or hurt you. Number two, emotions. This is really key. Your body is a incredible mechanism for cheating. And what I mean by that is that the more of an emotion you create, let's say you create an emotion for anger, anger, the more efficient it becomes so it doesn't have to work so hard to create the anger. So for example, the, the adrenal receptors um, and the cortisol receptors all over your body that respond to anger will get better and better and better and more efficient the more you use them. Therefore, you turn on genes within cells to become more efficient at processing stress. Now, that's not good, because the more efficient you are at processing stress, the more stress you become. Therefore, the more stress, the more stress, the more stress. That's why it's so important to take small breaks, because meditation, breaks in nature, change this cycle and actually make you more efficient at dealing with things like oxytocin, the love chemical, and the bonding chemicals, and the peace chemicals. Number three, your thoughts. Neurons that fire together, wire together. And those thoughts create patterns and brain waves that then stimulate hormones that then turn on genes off and on. So it's not about positive thinking. It's not about negative thinking. Quite often you'll hear me say, you know, we've been a bit sidetracked. We have this entire, you know, it's the secret generation where you just think about things you don't have and they will magically appear. What's really important to understand is that when you continually think about things you don't have, you stimulate stress responses. And yes, it's motivational because you might get off your butt and work a bit harder to get the house you don't really need with the extra rooms. However, it doesn't serve you from an epigenetic level. Being present in the moment allows your body and your DNA to respond to the environment and the situation around them, rather than constantly you know, thinking about future events and having to live them. You know, they show in studies where they get 100 meter sprinters like Usain Bolt and they strap them with electrodes and they play a tape in the background of the 100 meter sprint in the Olympics. His body goes through the 100 meter sprint. His heart rate increases, his adrenaline increases, even though he's not at the event. So don't put your body through unnecessary situations by thinking them. Just like Mark Twain said, I've been through some horrible, devastating things in my life and a few of them actually happened. Understanding your karma. So your karma chain, which is interesting to the double helix chain of your DNA, are 
absolutely linked. So, yes, you carry karma forward with you. Yes, your past events and the way you've treated the universe moves through with you, and that's your DNA, that's the hardwired stuff, but your choices in the present moment is your epigenetics, your epi karma. So what I mean by that is that it doesn't matter what you've done in the past, you could be a mass murderer. Yes, you will carry that through the collective unconscious in your DNA, but the choices you make today will affect your epigenetics, so how those genes manifest. And whether you're Adolf Hitler or Desmond Tutu, we all have the same collective karma. We all carry 99.9% the exact same DNA. So your choices in the present moment will activate no matter how bad or good you've been in the past, your future outcomes. Current Current trends, sorry, current situations predict future trends come from the present moment. And finally, understand you can do anything. Your DNA is identical to Albert Einstein's. In fact, when Albert Einstein died, there was a rush to investigate his brain. It was studied by so many neuroscience scientists to find out what made him a genius. And the answer is nothing. His brain is almost identical to every other brain autopsy. In fact, you could put two brains together of someone who might have been um, someone who didn't even know how to spell, and you could put it next to Einstein's, and neuroscientists couldn't tell the difference. Why? Because where you come from and how you activate your epigenetics, your hardware is not going to change. Your hardware can do anything. The same brain that you know spends time choosing the color of a crayon is the same brain that could come up with relativity. So as you understand, your hardware is perfect. Your hardware can do anything. If someone has done it before, you can do it. You just need to activate the epigenetics in order to maximize your potential. The, the great example would be you know, marathon runners. There are so many runners who just continually through practice activate that epigenetics to become fitter, healthier, bigger lungs, bigger heart, but they did it through being present and training and practicing and they actually changed their body. They changed that shape, they changed their ability and their skills. Your DNA is not a curse, it is this beautiful it's trial and error experiment by the universe to create amazing life forms that are conscious that can bring the world into observation. You're in charge still as a conscious observer. The choices you make activate the epigenetics within you to create the body, the life, the hormones, the, the brain activity that helps your life just cruise on autopilot without having to worry and just trusting and having faith. I can't wait to see you tomorrow, but until then, goodbye.